Well, this is going to be an adventure. <sighs> Welcome back to the channel, guys. Um, if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. You're going to follow along on this story with me that I'm about to tell today. So, as you guys know, back in July, I made a video saying that $90,000 of my student loans is uncollectible. Well, despite it being uncollectible, I kept getting uh, bill collectors sending me notices. And I would just send off a debt validation letter. Uh, most of them I never heard anything back, but there was one company that sent me some paperwork. It's a company that I'd had before. I challenged them with the letter and they disappeared. Well, somehow they got the file again and started contacting me again. So I asked them for information. They sent me information and then I sent them another letter. I said, no, this is not what I asked for. I specifically asked for these things and if you're not able to provide that, then, you know, I don't have any reason to believe that you are the company that I should be paying this to. They did not respond, which is a clear violation of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, and instead of responding, they sued me. Okay? Except, I don't know what's going on here. So, it was maybe two weeks after I sent that follow-up letter saying, no, send me the actual documents that I, that I requested, the documents that you are required to provide, and they didn't respond at all. So they sued me. Now here is why this is not okay. This particular company that is uh, behind the student loan is actually banned from suing people right now because of two things. Um, they're banned by the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, because they were creating false documentation and submitting it to the court or going to court and not having the documentation to prove um, that either they own the loan or that the person they were suing owed the loan. So the CFPB just completely banned them from suing uh, in any borrowers because they had had so many issues with this. The only way in which they were allowed to sue anyone was if they had all the proper documentation to absolutely prove that they would be able, that not only that they were the company who was supposed to be collecting on the loan, but that they had like the the chain of sales every time the loan was sold off, they could prove it, they could prove that the person they were suing was the right person, that that person owed it in the first place, etc. So this company um, apparently sued me but no one told me. So I got a letter in the mail around early, I don't know, early November, and it was a solicitation from a law firm. And it said, you have been sued by this person and we'd love to represent you. And I'm like, what? And I thought maybe it was like junk mail because I'm like, I don't know anything about a lawsuit. But then I recognized the name of the lender. So there's this website that we use uh, for the re real estate industry, we can look stuff up that sometimes doesn't appear on a credit report. And sure enough, filed like a week before I got this letter, there's a lawsuit there. Well, it also shows that they sent out a certified letter to me to be served. Well, I get the tracking number for the letter, and it says, return to sender. So I go... I have a pretty good relationship with my mailman here, and I asked him about it, and I was like, did you get a certified letter for me? And he's like, no. He's brought one before. I know he brings it to the door and has me sign for it, but he, he just didn't have one. So that was like the second week of November. Nothing else happened the rest of November. None of December. Nothing in January. Uh, so I thought, that's it. Like, I guess they just are going to leave it pending. Anyway, um, during this time, I did go talk to an attorney, and she has accepted my case. Um, I had her look over all the paperwork I have, showed her what I sent them, what they sent me. She said, no, absolutely, this is not what they're supposed to send you. Um, she said, 
you know, if they are not sending you this, they probably don't have it. Uh, more than likely don't have what they actually need in order to get a judgment against you. Um, and as she was looking through the stuff, she's like, she ne they never replied to your last one. And I said, no, they didn't. They j just never replied and sued me instead. She's like, okay, well, they can't sue you right now, so you need to file a complaint with the CFPB. And I did. So I file this complaint with the CFPB saying that they violated the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act by not responding to my validation letter and instead sued me, which they're not supposed to be doing. Their response was that they would send me what I asked for. This is like two months later now and they have not sent it. Um, and But they told the CFPB they would and they also assured me, almost in like a mocking fashion, that they have the documentation. Well, I really don't think you do, because you, before, and every other company that I have sent a DAT validation letter to has not been able to prove it. So I really don't think that you have anything, especially when you're currently banned from suing and your company's in trouble for creating false documentation. I mean, you really just don't have a case here. So where, the, where this all comes together is that so I have the attorney, and we're just waiting to get the actual thing from the court that you then have 28 days to respond to. So we're waiting and waiting, and I check in with her, and she's like, yeah, they may just not even send it. And like, they, She's like, they don't have a case anyway, so, you know, whatever. So here, here's what happened. Um, probably last week, something like that, I get a notification by email because I signed up for them. Keep in mind that had I not got that solicitation from a law firm, I would have no idea that there is a currently pending lawsuit against me because I've gotten no contact from the court or from this company, anything, all right? So I still am waiting on some sort of certified letter. I get this notification by email, I log into the court's website, and I see that they have now sent out two more certified letters. One of them they sent to themselves, and I followed that tracking number, it was delivered. The second one they sent to me. Here's the problem. They are sending it to the wrong address. Like, it's the right address, but the wrong zip code. And I don't know how they got this other zip code. It's another zip code in Columbus, all right? So there's really no reason that it shouldn't get to me, um, which I'm gonna address here in a second. I've got something to show how easy it should be. There's no reason that it shouldn't get here, but for some reason it's not. The second one, it went to the post office of the zip code where they sent it to. It did not go to me, I did not get any notification, and then they, within a day, changed the status of it to return to sender, okay? They're supposed to hold it five to seven days, so I don't know why they didn't do that. But I wanna show you something, because <clears throat> there is another collection agency that is coming after me for a loan, um, and I wanna show you something. I'm gonna show you this because it's not at all my correct address, so you're not gonna get any information from there. But check this out because this letter right here, I don't know if you guys can make that out. It's got my name, Q for the address, apartment C4. So I don't have an apartment number, and what the hell kind of address is Q? And guess what? This got to me. So if you can put my name and the city, and it gets to me, then there's something wrong when only the zip code is wrong and it doesn't get to me. So something's going on here, all right? So, <clears throat> so anyway, I um, watched the tracking number, it was sent back to them, and that's all I know as of right now. Um, what I have been told is that if they can't get it to you by certified mail, 
that in Ohio at least, they then allow them to just send it first class mail and that that constitutes you being served. Well, the problem with that is that they're sending it to the wrong address. Well, wrong zip code anyhow. So I don't know why this got delivered to me and this these other things are not being delivered to me, but like if I get it first class mail, fair enough, I'll go to the attorney and I'll have her start her gig then, okay? Um, but if it doesn't come to me again, if I don't get the notification, then my 28 days will pass, they will have considered me served, and then this company is going to get a default judgment because I didn't respond. Now, I have read online that if they do it this way, and then you just inform the court that, hey, I never received any of this, and therefore, you know, um, like they will easily overturn the default judgment. I don't know how true that is, but um, you know, that is a possible route to go. With all that being said, um, I don't know if that's something that I want to deal with. I may just follow it on my own, pay the attorney, have her fight it off, because they're not going to win anyway. Um, according to her, she's never lost a case against these people, and that they're just the scum of the earth, and basically... Um, yeah, you know, there, there's no chance of them getting anything against me. Um, yeah, you know, she did look over my case and she pointed out a couple of things. Number one is that by being honest and trying to pay off my debts, I totally screwed myself over. She said, if I would have just never paid a payment toward these loans, I just would have been past the statute of limitations and they wouldn't have been able to collect whatsoever. Um, the thing that sucks about it is with me having a cosigner, the cosigner making a payment, which I told her repeatedly not to, I told her if she's going to make a payment, make it toward the current loans, not the past due loans, but she insisted on doing it, and that screwed me over too, because every time she made a payment, it reset that statute of limitations, which I think in Ohio is six years, something like that. So anyway, um, with that being the case, um... I got an interesting letter just the other day. It's from this same agency who keeps saying that they're going to send me this documentation that they're not sending me and who keeps sending me these certified letters that are not getting to me. Now, I don't know how to make it any more clear what my address is. Every time I've written to them, I have my address on there. I don't know. But this debt collection notice that they sent me about another loan got here. It still had the wrong zip code on it, but it got here. So what is the deal with these other letters, right? And with that, I'm like, are they purposefully doing something in order to not let the letter get here so that they get a default judgment? Well, I got a surprise for them because I... <coughs> Sorry about that. I do not get wages, so you can't garnish my wages because I am paid by 1099, so good luck there. Um, this is that company that just absolutely would not work with me at all, like wouldn't lower payments, wouldn't talk to me on the phone unless I was paying the loan in full. They didn't even want to take their installment payments of like 20 years of payments as soon as I graduated college, they're like, you owe $50,000 immediately. We're not going to speak to you until you pay this. Um, I mean, th this company just, their collection practices in a business perspective make no sense. Um, because what's going to end up is they're not going to be able to collect on all these loans that they def they defaulted on or called for default. Um, these people that would have been able to make their payments had they worked with them, now this company is just not going to get any money. So... It's their own fault that, you know, they made these bad business decisions and they treated the customers the way that they did. Um, I don't feel one bit sorry for them whatsoever. So I'm going to follow this through. I'm going to see what happens. I'm, we are, we've already planned to counter sue them. I'm not going to get into the details here so that they can prepare a defense if they see the video, but I am uh, planning to counter sue um, for several different things. Uh, and the attorneys already set that up to do that. So we're just waiting on them to get that thing from the court to me, and then um, 
I will officially at that point have paperwork, at least for this loan, which is one third of the amount that I talked about before, that will officially have court documentation that I do not have to pay. So uh, they really shot themselves in the foot with this one. So it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, it's something I don't really want to deal with. But at the same time, I mean, they can't prove they own the loan. They can't prove that, they can't prove to me that they can collect on the loan or that it's even mine. There is some question as to that. Um, I think I've mentioned that before where like signatures are scratched out and stuff like that. They won't provide the documentation. My attorney says that means they don't have it. They're currently banned from suing people and they did anyway. Um, but guys, I've gone through three rounds of CFPB complaints with these people. I filed the first one because the attorney told me to. Then they said, well, we assure you we have what we need. And then they were going to send me documentation. Well, they never sent me the documentation. And then a month later, I filed another complaint saying they told me that they were going to send me documentation. And they told me to contact them if I had any uh, concerns. And I said, well, they didn't give me their name or contact information. So they really don't want me to do that. Um, so then they, then they sent a response saying that, oh, well, we are, we're still going to send you that, which obviously they hadn't then and they haven't now. Um, and then they gave me an email address, which was just like an info at email address that was never responded to when I emailed it. And then they, I filed a third complaint saying, hey, you guys still, after two months, have not sent me anything, but yet you sent my cosigner some stuff. Now, to their credit, my cosigner was a little confused. She didn't understand what the CFPB was. She thought it was a collection agency. So when she got that, she told me, hey, yeah, they sent me more stuff. Um, but in reality, it was the CFPB sending her a paper copy of the complaint that I had filed. So, okay. Maybe that's not that shady, but their response to it was because their response was that they had sent the documentation that I had been asking for for two months to my cosigner. But then when I get to my cosigner, I find out what the stuff really is, and it's not at all what they said that they were sending. So, anyway, after talking to my attorney, she said there's a 0% chance that they have any of the documentation that they're just doing this to try to intimidate me into paying. Well, here's the thing. If I had the money, I would have paid to begin with. And if I had the money now, I'd just pay you a lump sum up front. So I don't have the money, and you obviously do not have the legal position where you're going to be able to get the money, so you're just wasting your own time. You know, if you wanted me to save up all, you know, lump sum of money and then pay it off to you. That was the plan. But if I have to spend that money on paying an attorney to countersue you for Fair Debt Collection Practices Act violations and CFPV violations, then we can go that route too and you won't get any money. And that seems to be the route that they want to go. So anyway, guys, life will be interesting here for a while. Um, I'll update you on this as it goes on. Um, Thank you for all the new subscribers. Um, this is, I'm, I'm getting close to a thousand. I've got like 14 days. Yeah, I think like two weeks, um, to get to a thousand, um, in order to keep my channel monetized. So please help me out. Share this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe. Um, I mean, honestly, if you hate me, you can unsubscribe February 21st. That's fine with me. Um, just do it right now to help me out. I would really appreciate it. And, um, I'm going to try, I've been working a lot, I'm going to try to do a video every day up until the 20th to try to build subscribers. So hopefully you'll be getting a lot more content from me here soon. Um, so anyway guys, um, thanks for watching. If you have, uh, have, if you've had a similar experience, I'm not gonna give you the name of the actual agency, but if you've had a similar experience to this, make sure you put it down in the comments, let me know um, what happened with you. Um, how you fought it or if you've countersued and won let me know that too um, I'd love to hear about it and this is all supposed to go in tr to trial in November so I'll probably be updating you guys at least through then so thank you guys for watching make sure to like and subscribe 
and I'll have another video up for you very soon this week.